Does the United States need more or fewer police? Why is Senator, the determination about whether there should be more or fewer police is a policy decision (laughs) by another branch of government. It is not something that judges have control over. And I will stay in my lane in terms of (laughs) the kinds of things that are properly in the judicial branch. Okay. You don't want to address whether the United States needs more or fewer police. We'll move on to sentencing, which is certainly in your lane. Okay. Tom. Oh, Tom. Yo, Tom. That is not a question for a judge, whether or not you need more police in any state, in any county, in any city. That is a question for a mayor. That is a question for a governor. That is a that is not a question for a judge, let alone a Supreme Court justice. It is not a question she will ever have come before her. So why are you wasting everyone's precious time with these red herring straw men uh, arguments? Oh, you don't want to talk about, you don't want to talk about. No, I don't, uh, I don't study that area. This is not up to my branch of government, the judiciary. This is up to the legislative branch. This is up to an executive. Certainly not anything in my wheelhouse. Not anything. But I want to show you something. I want to show you that she, Katanji Brown Jackson, has been endorsed by every single police union agency group that you could possibly, the the Fraternal Order of Police, they've all endorsed her. And you know what? It's getting in the way. It's getting in the way of their talking points. For many of senators, yesterday was an opportunity to showcase talking points for the November election. Ah. For example, all Democrats are soft on crime. Therefore, this nominee must be soft on crime. (laughs) Well, you've made a mess of their stereotype. The endorsement of the Fraternal Order of Police, the International Association of Chiefs of Police, just doesn't fit with their stereotype of a Harvard grad, black woman who is aspiring to the highest court in the land. But you earned it. Law enforcement is on your side because you've been on their side at critical moments. And your family has dedicated a big part of their lives to law enforcement, and you obviously believe it at your core. You said that over and over again. So the soft on crime uh, charge, which leads all others, falls on its face. Not only that, I don't know if you know this or not, but her brother, who's sitting there in the gallery for moral support, for brotherly love, is a detective in Baltimore a police detective in Baltimore. And then he joined the military uh, when uh, it was time to go to Iraq. I mean, this is, this is so vile what they're doing here, making her seem as if she's soft on crime when Congress has every ability to legislate what our position on guns, homicide, sentences, et cetera, et cetera, are. And they won't do it. They just want to associate her with soft on crime. They want to associate her with the abuse of children, which is just so vile. I mean, you can't, you, and, and this is all because, because they feel like they've been victimized. Do you understand this? They feel like they were deprived of Janice Rogers Brown. They feel like they were deprived of some of the uh, Trump nominees. But here's a little exercise I like to do every now and then. It's called compare and contrast. Critical thinkers understand why this is important. And even if you don't, you know, say you're a critical thinker or think you are, I'm going to make you into one right freaking now. This is Senator John Kennedy asking basic procedural questions, civil procedure, basic law school, 101, first year law school questions to Trump's nominees for district court judges, okay? Uh, This is painful, I'm warning you. But here you have in 2017, Justice Kennedy questioning Donald Trump's picks just to compare and contrast the quality of the nominees. Have you ever taken a deposition? 
I was involved in taking depositions when I was associate uh, mm -hmm. at Wiley Ryan when I uh, first came out of law school. Um, oh. But that that was. Uh, you ever how, how many how many depositions? I would um, I'd be struggling to <laughs> to, to remember. Uh, but but, less than ten. Yes. Less than five. Probably somewhere okay. in that range. Have you ever tried a, taking a, a deposition by yourself? Uh, I believe no. Okay. I believe no. Uh, have you ever argued a motion in state court? I have not. <laughs> have you ever argued a motion in federal court? No. <laughs> uh, when's the last time you read the federal rules of civil procedure? Uh, the Federal Law Rules School. of Civil Procedure, um, I have, in my current position, I obviously don't need to stay as, um, uh, you know, uh, invested in those <laughs> on a day-to-day -day basis, but I do try to keep up to speed. We do have, uh, at, the, at the Federal Election Commission, roughly 70 attorneys who work under our, our guidance, uh, including a large litigation division. And um, as a commissioner, we oversee that litigation. We advise them on overall all okay. legal strategy, uh, provide oh, um, recommendations and edits to briefs and so forth, and meet with them about uh, how we're what, going to handle it. If I could ask you this, sure. I'm sorry to interrupt okay. you, but we're only given five minutes for five of you. So. Sure. Five of them. When, when's the last time you read the federal rules of evidence? <laughs> the federal rules of evidence all the way through would... Um, yeah, all the way through. Well comprehensively would have been in, in law school. Yeah, he's so qualified. So this is a guy who sits on the Federal Election Commission and advises the litigators at the Federal Election Commission who is responsible for election fraud, foreign money, dirty money, dark money, etc. Law breaking around fundraising for federal candidates, okay? the legal strategy to prosecute those federal election crimes. No wonder we have no federal election crimes that are prosecuted. But this was one of Trump's picks. And there were five of them there that day. I don't know if you remember this, but it was horrendous. Five guys, none of them, all trying to be district court judge judges. None of them had any experience practicing law. For those of you who ever went to law school, this is a basic first year law school student question. Do you know what a motion in limine is? Uh, mm. Yes, I haven't. Um, I'm, I'm, again, my uh, background is not uh, in litigation as, as uh, when I was replying to uh, Chairman Grassley. <laughs> um, I haven't had to, um, again, do a deep dive, and I under, and I and I understand, and and I appreciate this this line of questioning. I understand uh, the challenge that would be ahead of me if I were fortunate enough to become, to become a, a judge. district court judge. I oh my god! So a motion in limine is uh, it's a motion that you would file if you wanted to say some evidence was inadmissible. Okay, it's basic. I don't have a law degree, as you know. I have an honorary law degree. This man was holding himself out to be a district court judge where motions in limine, where rules of evidence, where civil procedure would be paramount to know this was the quality of the candidates that Trump put forward. Here we have Katanji Brown Jackson, who graduated Harvard and Harvard Law cum laude. And they're asking her about how many police we should have on the street. Don't have time to listen to the live show? Want to hear more on your schedule? Go to randyroads.com and buy a stinking podcast.